I don't think I'm going to fit. All right. Recently, I was listening to an audiobook by one of my favorite authors. It was fiction. And in the narrative of the book, one of the characters made a comment about, kind of a sarcastic comment about, come back with your shield or on it. And in the narrative of the text, that was presented in kind of a machismo way and in a sense of you either need to win the battle or don't come back. And it really annoyed me because the book is excellent, but that is not what that quote means. That's not what it meant when it was a cultural thing. And it, it just annoyed me that it was presented in such a incorrect way. So I'm just going to talk about it. And I'm also going to talk about Part of the reason I'm talking about it is because I think that the idea behind that quote has value for life today, even though neither of us will probably ever go into battle with the shield. Um, the con and you may never go into battle at all, but the concept is still something we can benefit from. So, what did it mean? Now, this is a buckler. This thing only weighs about three pounds, and it's probably, honestly, heavier than it needs to be. I've heard... Other people refer to this as a pot lid, and I can't disagree. It's heavy, it's cumbersome. I've seen other examples that were much lighter and much easier to use. This is structured for a very dynamic type of combat. The hoplites, the Greeks, were talking about kind of a period, for what I'm talking about today, kind of 500 BC, 400 BC, and a little before that and a little after that. Their shields were three, three feet across. This is only one foot across. And from what I've read, I've never handled... I've never handled one of their shields, but from what I've read, they weighed 15 to 20 pounds. So they were much more cumbersome than that, and they were not designed for a dynamic kind of combat. So when we're talking about the kind of warfare that the hoplites in ancient Greece were engaged in, we have three possible outcomes that refer to this quote, come back with your shield or on it. One outcome is victory. One outcome is failure. And the third outcome is dropping your shield and running away screaming. And that was the one that caused the concern. Now, you can probably imagine if I had decided to run away for some reason, running with this would be cumbersome. Letting it go would be a lot easier. Can you imagine a 15 or 20 pound shield? If a soldier came back from a battle and he didn't have his shield with him, that was really shameful. And everybody would know that he probably dropped his shield and ran. Now, why was this a problem? It wasn't a problem just because they lost. Because sometimes the type of warfare they fought, it was a lot different than I think we think about today. I'll put a link in the description to a book that goes into a lot of detail about this because it's pretty interesting. That type of warfare, the phalanx warfare, relative to some other types of warfare, the fatality rates were actually fairly low. And some of the time, depending on what the conflict was about, the two armies would clash, they would push against each other. One phalanx would basically push through the other. That's where probably most of your fatalities happen because people would fall and trip and they would get stabbed or trampled. But if they broke and ran, the concern was reputation. Because if you went to the battlefield and you faced an opponent, and even if you lost, if you put on a good fight and you, you're, you're, you and the rest of the soldiers with you didn't show fear, that kind of thing got around. You have to keep in mind, this period was one where they had city-states. They didn't have large governments. And sometimes those city-states were friendly. Sometimes they were not. Sometimes in the same generation, they would be both. Uh, so they might start out as allies, and then they might have some kind of a rivalry, then they might be allies again, or you could flip that the other way. This was a really turbulent period, and there, was a lot of, there were a lot of power struggles. The point is, it was, it was important for soldiers to show courage, because if they showed cowardice, and other city-states heard about that, they might be tempted to raid your lands, and... Not necessarily sack your city, although that's a possible outcome, but they might be ready, they might be more tempted to come and raid your lands and kidnap people and steal property than they might be if they thought they were going to show up and face a resolute enemy. So, what that gives us is the possibility of success, the possibility of failure, and the possibility of shame. And so, you can imagine in that kind of a culture where courage was needed to be really important because it was literally the safety of your city. If someone dropped their shield and ran and they came back from a battle without their shield and everyone else had their shields, how do you think that would go for the person that didn't have their shield? So how do you take this idea and turn it into something useful for your life? 
is most likely you will not be going into battle with a shield, much less a hoplite battle. And even if you do have to get into battle, again, a shield probably isn't going to be a part of it unless you're on an entry team. And that's a pretty small percentage of the population. So what we take from this is the idea of victory, the idea of failure, and then the idea of shame. Everybody wants to succeed. We all want that. It doesn't matter what the subject is, business, relationships, everybody wants to succeed. And for the most part, people endeavor in things where they have some chance of success. Failure is always a possibility. Even if you, in, even if you engage in something where it seems like the chance of success is very high, sometimes people fail. We don't always hear those stories. Um, I think disproportionately, people hear about the amazing successes and they think they're just going to try something for the first time and, and have some astronomical success. And obviously that happens. I don't think it happens very often the first time someone tries something. Usually it's been after they've worked on something for quite some time. But, but I think there's a lot of unrealistic expectations there. And then we've got the idea of quitting. My concern is a lot of people are going to quit when they get a little bit uncomfortable or when they, they try something, they engage in something, and they don't see automatic success. And the weird thing is, in our current culture, there doesn't seem to be a lot of shame associated with quitting, with giving up. All right, so we've got the possibility of success, we have the possibility of failure, and then we have what should be shame. My point is, understand we're not always going to succeed. Sometimes we're going to lose. Sometimes we're going to lose a lot. When we lose, we want to learn from that as much as we can so that we can have success in the future. On the shame side, I would encourage you not to surround yourself with people that celebrate quitting. People, some people feed off that and they'll encourage that. And some people want other people to be miserable because they all want to just sort of drink in that little mind virus. And it, I think that's really unhealthy. So try to surround yourself, try to identify people who understand the difference between success and failure. And that's difficult because people focus on success and they don't understand the value of not winning. Obviously in a battle, you know, that's kind of a different scale, but in everyday life, some people are so risk averse, they don't try anything. They don't even get to the point of quitting. They don't try. Obviously there can be value in recognizing when something isn't worth your time, but if every idea you think of comes to that point where you decide it's not worth trying. Get around some people to help you come up with some better ideas. All right, I'm out of words and I'm not even sure if this has been a cohesive video. It made a lot of sense in my head. We'll see how the editing works out. So wrapping that up, we have the possibility of success. We have the possibility of failure. You can run away screaming. Don't drop your shield, go read a book.